let's start then yeah yeah sure. uh, okay i'll start then hi everyone uh, hi everyone i am shada and uh, i am the co-founder of quantum computing india and we have uh, dr neil here who is uh, post talk and uh, he will be the speaker for today presenting in quantum communication in industry by network so uh, before jumping to the talk uh, let's uh, introduce the meetup group first and after that i will hand over the session to dr neil so as you can see today we are having this uh, talk by dr neil like that like uh, washington quantum computing india group was funded by dr dev and uh, elen is uh, one of the co organizers for this meetup and uh, we collaborate with different other quantum communities across the globe like uh, quantum ai quantum computing india association quantum q poland rynex and all and uh, there are certain meet, uh, meetups hosted weekly or on like each month we have some meetups coming up so if you are planning to learn and up skill on quantum technologies so we have a diverse group of topics and speakers are from diverse uh, expertise you can join these meetup groups and uh, can attend to sessions so just to give you an overview of like what all of the meetups are so this one is today like quantum communications in 6g uh, wireless network on november 6 we have first uh, by uh, dr anna patel uh, that is on quantum zero telepathy so this is also organized by getting organized by washington dc quantum meetup group and uh, next to that uh, on november 12 we have uh, circuit com compilation and error mitigation for near term quantum computing the moderator will be uh, pavel and ashan uh, will be the speaker for that talk after that we have johan who will be uh, presenting on quantum computing for java developers so so far whatever indicator we have team mostly we are exploring with python or low level language but uh, there is something for java developers as well so if you develop on java a session will be worth attending for then on jan 29 we have uh, on diversity in classical and quantum computation so that is again going to be uh, delivered by dr anna so you can attend that and these are few of our sponsors like community collaborators like help us in moderating the session coming up as a speaker or lining up a speaker uh, for different topics uh, like qubinet association quantum qpool and orinx cambridge quantum qworld warsaw quantum computing group quantum computing india so if you have like uh, anyone in mind or if you want to speak uh, in upcoming meetups then please feel free to approach either uh, helen me or dr dev and uh, if you have someone in mind whom you think will be a good potential speaker for our community then uh, you can just ping us on LinkedIn also email ID and we will be happy to take that uh, forward from you. Okay, so uh, this this is pretty much about the meetup group. If you have not joined the meetup group, then I will ask you to go to meetup dot com and uh, this one is the meetup group Washington uh, DC Quantum Computing Meetup Group. So I'm pinging you this link in the chat for to follow up like for the upcoming meetup what we have. Uh, like in future we have planned, you can go to this meetup group and uh, you can do the RSV together. All right, so that's enough for the introduction. I will start with uh, like today's topic. Uh, I will just give the intro of Dr. Neil and then uh, he will take it forward. So Dr. Neil has received B.Tech degree in electrical engineering from uh, IIT Delhi with a specialization in uh, uh, communication systems and networking. And uh, after that he. Completed his PhD degree in electronic and computer engineering, uh, scientific computing concentration from the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology in 2022. Currently, he is a postdoc researcher uh, associated with the Department of Electronic and uh, Computer Engineering at Hong Kong Institute, Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. And uh, he was also a visiting student intern with the Rice Integrated Systems and Circuit Lab at Rice University, USA. and apart from that uh, she was a visiting phd student with the department of engineering university of harare italy as well and his research interest include signal processing of 6g wireless communication quantum communications and quantum computing he is also the recipient of uh, hong kong phd fellowship 
and the overseas research award uh, like this is zedbird academic excellence award and i mean zedbird academic excellence award as well and uh, hong kong telecommunication institute of information technology post grad excellence scholarship as well as and he was one of the winners of the 3 minute research video contest at the global young scientist summit 21 a forum that include talks from nobel laureates Gold medals and uh, Turing Award winners, which was organized by National Research Foundation, Government of Singapore. So he has a lot of uh, like achievement. Uh, he's already a postdoc researcher, and uh, so many excellence award and scholarships he has achieved. So this session is, I mean, definitely going to be worth attending if you are interested in communication and wireless network. And definitely, like we have seen, like how fast five G has come. And people are making good of. And next big thing is six G wireless network and the collaboration of quantum communication and uh, its application in six G wireless network will be definitely something worth exploring. So over to you, Dr. Neil, and we're looking forward to learning. Thank you. 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 Thank Uh, okay, so uh, thank you, Shada, for the kind introduction. So, hello everyone, welcome uh, to the presentation titled "Quantum Communications in 6G Wireless Networks." This is organized by Quantum Computing Meetup, and yeah, so here is a short bio. So Shada have already introduced, so uh, I might skip on this. And if you are interested in these research interest on 6G wireless communication and quantum communication and quantum information science. Then you can connect with me over LinkedIn, and if you have any questions or discussion after this talk. So yeah, so before uh, beginning this presentation, I would like to start mentioning about this uh, this year's Nobel Prize in Physics. So this was given to these three um, phenomenal scientists, uh, experimental physicists, uh, Alan Aspey, John F. Clauser, and Anton Zeilinger. For basically experimentation with entangled photons and verifying the violation of Bell inequalities, and uh, especially the third part on pioneering quantum information science, this is uh, in the uh, for the work done by Professor Anton Zeilinger uh, in his career. So we are, we can see that we are currently in very exciting times, and we will witness the practical applications of quantum technology in the coming future. So it is the right time to start a career and career. here in quantum technology and build the future of information and communication technology using uh, quantum uh, quantum mechanics uh, in the uh, as the background so yeah so this is the overview of our presentation first i will introduce uh, 6g wireless networks uh, the use cases which will be uh, the new use cases in 6g and also the required technologies uh, for 6g communication in the uh, in the future then i will present the role of quantum technology in 6g networks basically what are the benefits that quantum can provide for 6g communication then i will introduce quantum key distribution uh, which is an important uh, quantum communication protocol that can be used for secure data transmission in 6g communication networks then i will uh, present uh, mimo terahertz quantum key distribution so uh, this is based on my phd research which is a new Uh, quantum communication protocol which we have proposed in our work then i will talk about the standardization activities taking place in the industry by different standardization bodies and finally i will discuss about some of the implementation challenges like which should be overcome in the next few years so that we can have widespread deployment of qkd and other quantum communication uh, application in our 6g wireless communication so yeah so let's get started so here is the evolution of mobile networks over the past few decades so as you can see the first generation wireless services or 1g started in 1980s and it supported very basic voice services using the analog communication technology and since then we have a new wireless technology evolving in every decade for example in the early 1990s uh, 2g services were Uh, were uh, rolled out in various parts of the world 
and it supported services like digital transmission of voice and text and sms services and very li limited data service then we had the 3g wireless communication which was rolled out in early 2000 and it supported mobile broadband communication mms services mobile te television and video calls among others then in 2010 we had the uh, fourth generation 4g or lte communication technology and it was a quite big hit with the uh, introduction of smartphones and tablets and it supported various new services like uh, improved uh, broadband services um, voice over ip protocol high definition video streaming and mobile gaming and now we are living in the 5g world so 5g has already been commercialized in various parts of the world and it supports services like enhanced mobile broadband ultra reliable low latency communication passive machine type communication and vr ar and autonomous vehicles industry uh, internet of things industry 4.0 among others so now what next so now logically it seems that we are now going towards 6g or 6g wireless communication and already researchers have started investigating what are the key requirements of 6g which 5g cannot deliver for example, 6G will deliver a data rates of peak data rate of 1 TBPS, extremely low latency or end-to-end -end delay of less than 0.1 millisecond, very high reliability and a large number of connected devices within an area. So for achieving these requirements, we have to develop new technologies in the physical layer and also in the higher layers. So these will include using the terahertz spectrum to increase the bandwidth requirement. And also artificial and artificial intelligence and machine learning will, will play a key role in achieving these demands in 6G networks. So the network as a whole will be more intelligent. It can take autonomous decisions. And it will also support a plethora of applications like blockchain, swarm network, zero touch network, and among others. And we will also see the development of new technologies. For example, currently we have only terrestrial communication using base station. But in 6G, we will have these satellite based communication so we can be able to connect our mobile devices to uh, satellites in the space and it will be uh, it, it will happen as a backup option when the terrestrial network fails then in the remote area these satellites can provide connectivity uh, for example starlink has already started this project so in the next decade we will see a more uh, accessible accessibility to this satellite based communication and then there are a number of use cases for 6G. For example, we will have this UAV communication, holographic telepresence, extended reality, smart grids, body area networks, among others. So the future looks very uh, bright and we will see a lot of exciting applications in 6G. So yeah, so let's see what are the main uh, other challenges in 6G. So as I already told, 5G has commercialized in 2020. And as we can see that this, uh, this wireless technology is very important because it provides ubiquitous connectivity. And during this pandemic, it was a very important for everyone because with this technology, we are able to get connected with our uh, peers and it enable remote learning and work. So now it is the right time to start uh, research for 6G for the next decade and beyond. So 6G will support new services, as I already mentioned, for example, immersive extended reality, holographic telepresence, tactile internet, industry 5.0, e-health, and secure financial services. So in order to meet these new services, there are certain demands which 6G network should support. So this figure shows a comparison of the different requirements of 6G as compared to 5G and the 4G technology. So we see that 6G will require orders of magnitude of high spectrum and energy efficiency, very high reliability, and high increased uh, uh, the peak data rates and the user experience data rates. So in order to meet these stringent requirements, what we need, we need new physical layer technology. So we need new antenna technology and also new signal processing algorithms, which can meet this stringent requirement. Moreover, quantum information and technology is also going to play an important role in achieving all these demands of 6G applications. So these are my current research interests and I'm working on these research topics and I will discuss some of these uh, things in, in, in this presentation. So let's see about the 6G use case in a typical environment. So here you can see some of the uh, use cases of 6G, for example, holographic telepresence. It will require extremely low latency and high uh, bandwidth or high data rates. Then we will have these smart grids and smart, smart industries and smart cities. 
Moreover, this intelligent healthcare is an upcoming new use case. We because in the pandemic we have seen that we require telemedicine, remote uh, uh, remote surgery, and teleconsultation services. Also, all the patient data will be stored in the cloud. So this is a very important use case which will be supported by six G. Moreover, we are also seeing this UAV based de delivery services coming up in the cities. And this is also going to be supported by 6G communication and this industry 5.0 for extremely low latency and ultra reliability. We will require these uh, things in industry 5.0. Moreover, autonomous vehicles will also be an important use case in 6G. And in 6G, they will, uh, all, everything which we are using, for example, the sensors, the smart watches, and the body area network, everything will be connected to the internet. So that uh, it will be an internet of everything. So all these use cases, you can see the data privacy and security is very important in 6G. So in order to support these services, we need to be, uh, the 6G should be able to pro uh, provide secure data transmission and privacy. For example, patient's data will be stored in the cloud. So th uh, the data should be secure. There should be not any unauthorized access in this data. So uh, as we have seen this security and privacy is extremely important in 6G. So now here is a comparison of these various uh, wireless technologies, which has evolved from 1980s to 2020. And now uh, we are now in the phase of researching and development of 6G communication for 2030 and beyond. So these are the some uh, key performance indicator comparison for 6G. For example, 6G will require very high data rates and the frequency band for 6G is supposed to be in terahertz. We have to go in the terahertz frequency band to have the high data rates. And also the standards are still not defined for 6G, but uh, various different multiplexing schemes are uh, being considered, for example, smart OFDM and uh, index modulation based techniques. Moreover, there is a new antenna technology which will be used in 6G, which is of intelligent service. And we will, I will discuss this in the later slides. And here also you can see the main highlight of 6G is the security, secrecy, and privacy. So this is the synergy of quantum and uh, 6G. So basically quantum technology can help 6G in achieving this security, secrecy, and privacy of data. So now here I discuss some of the emerging technologies for 6G. So as I mentioned before, this intelligent surface is going to be a key physical layer antenna technology for uh, 6G communication. So this works by intelligently controlling the propagation direction of the electromagnetic wave. So it can focus the signal at the users by smartly connect, um, controlling the phase shifts of the incoming electromagnetic waves. And it boosts the signal in this area. So it will improve the data rate to this user. So this is a new technology, physical layer technology, which will be very important for 6G. And we will also have new coding and modulation schemes and multiple access schemes. So these will be required to improve the spectral efficiency and energy efficiency of the future wireless networks. And another key technology which is coming up in 6G is the concept of cell-free networks. So in the current wireless technology, we have the concept of cells. So every geographical area is divided into small cells where the frequencies are reused in the alternative cells. And there is a um, base station in each cell. But in the cell-free network, the concept is that all the user's data will be jointly processed at a central processing unit. So by this, by this joint processing, the performance can be improved and the interference can be reduced. So we now currently have the intercell interference uh, in the current cellular network. So this cell-free networks can provide improved interference management. Moreover, we have the concept of multi-mode base station. So the base station in 6G should be able to connect to various uh, devices. For example, it should be able to connect to our conventional mobile devices, and also it should be able to connect to uh, smart watches and other wearable devices which we have. As I mentioned, satellite communication and UAV-based communication will also be used in 6G. So the base station should be able to communicate with the satellite or UAVs simultaneously with the large intelligence surface or intelligence surfaces. And now we see that this quantum information and computing will play a major role in 6G. So basically quantum communication is one part which will be used for enhanced security and quantum computing can be used for solving complex optimization problems. So as I mentioned in the cell-free, the central processing unit will process all the data. So this will require very high computing power. So in this use case, this quantum computers can be used to solve this optimize complex problems in a reasonable time. So this is one particular, one 
possible application of quantum computing in 6G. And also we will have this time, the concept of tiny cells. So tiny cells is a very small area where this uh, terahertz access point or visible light communication or Li-Fi will be used. Okay, so as I was mentioning, this uh, tiny cells concept is used for, will be used for terahertz communications and visible light communication. And also the frequency band will go up to terahertz and also the VLC and Li-Fi technology will be used for uh, providing connectivity at, at small distances. So now I will move on to um, quantum technologies in 6G networks. Uh, okay, so um, this uh, quantum mechanics as the fundamental laws of microscopy world was developed over a century ago by pioneers like Albert Einstein, Heisenberg, Schrodinger, etc. And now, uh, till now, this information technology has been revolutionized by using this, uh, the bulk properties or the average properties of quantum mechanics. For example, the transistors, which are the backbone of the computers, mobile phones, and the other devices which we use in our everyday life are um, based on the principles of quantum mechanics. Also lasers, which are used in communication for satellite communication and medical applications are also based on the properties of average properties of quantum mechanics. Similarly for optical fibers, which provides high speed data and also the backbone of the global uh, internet. So this is the first quantum revolution, which we have witnessed till now. So now it is the time for second quantum revolution. So as we all know, so we are now reaching the limit of Moore's law. So Moore's law states that uh, the number of transistors in a given chip area will double in every 18 months. So we now have the feature size in nanometers. Uh, so uh, we now have the feature size in um, nanometers. So therefore at these uh, nanometer scale, this quantum effects kick in. So we are now in the quantum age. So um, we can now uh, utilize this quantum properties in designing our devices which will lead to the development of new quantum technology. So basically quantum technology engineers single photons, atoms, electrons, and molecules to develop new technologies which are beyond the limits of classical technologies. So for example, um, uh, using single photons, we can use it for um, in improving the communication performance and also for the security using quantum key distribution. And also this, we can achieve higher capacity by using the uh, quantum principles of single photons. Similarly for electrons by uh, intelligently controlling the um, single electrons, we can develop this quantum computing architecture and quantum dots for realizing qubits. And also high precision electronic measurements are possible by uh, control of the single electrons. And for single atoms, we can in, in, improve the sensitivity of measurements in quantum clocks and quantum sensors. So by engineering single atoms, we can develop extremely precise quantum clocks and quantum sensors, which can be used for detecting gravitational waves. And lastly, uh, this quantum chemistry has applications where these single molecules are engineered to develop New, uh, new drugs and uh, uh, new materials. And therefore it has applications in um, a new drug discovery in uh, material science and also for in the medical science. So we are now moving from first quantum revolution, which was the past to second quantum revolution, which will be the future. So what are the main quantum technology applications in 6G? So it is divided into three parts. The first is on communications. So for quantum communications, QKD is a, application which can provide unconditional security. And also we can achieve high data rates by using the quantum properties of transmitter and the receiver. Moreover, we can have distributed quantum computing in the quantum internet where the, the uh, quantum computers will be in the cloud and they will be connected to each other by using this uh, quantum communication link. And this can help in uh, and they will transmit the qubits, uh, communicate the qubits for uh, solving some optimization problem in a distributed manner. Okay. Can you see the screen? Oh, yes. Now it's we're... becoming black in the middle. I think this. Yeah, I think someone is trying to annotate or something like that. Okay. Uh... 
I can see your screen. Okay, then I'll continue. Uh, now I think it's black again. Can you try now? I think. Let me see if I can find anyone the fishes. I will remove them. They can watch on you. You can continue. Okay. I, I can see your screen. Okay, so uh, let me continue. So as I mentioned, the first main application of quantum information technology will be in the communication domain. Then we will be in the quantum computing domain. So basically quantum algorithms can be used for solving complex optimization problems in 6G networks. And furthermore, quantum machine learning can be used for uh, radio resource allocation problem. And it, uh, using quantum computing, we can support services like blind quantum computing and quantum blockchain services. So it is anticipated that with the development of quantum processor and computers in the future, we will have quantum computing capability at the base station, which can jointly optimize the resources and improve the overall performance in the wireless networks. And the third application includes quantum metrology and sensing, where accurate timing synchronization can be achieved by using quantum clocks among the different devices in the network. And furthermore, accurate positioning and localization can be achieved by using quantum enhanced methods, for example, quantum radar, which uses quantum entanglement for better accuracy. So in quantum radar, an entangled photon source is generated. One of them is transmitted to the target. And after receiving the, uh, the reflected ones, it is jointly measured with the stored entangled photon in the memory to give a joint measurement so that the detection performance can be improved. So this type of uh, quantum uh, property can be used for localization in the uh, future 6G communication networks. So uh, this uh, figure gives an illustration of this quantum enabled 6G system. So it would be a 3D network. For example, we will have quantum enabled satellite system, which will be connected to the terrestrial networks uh, which will have this uh, for long distance quantum communication. So the physical channels will have the quantum capability using photonics and terahertz systems. And so this, these links will be made of fiber based systems for core networks and also free space channels for uh, uh, connecting with the satellites and for the wireless access. So many of these nodes will have uh, the uh, capability to send and receive quantum resources like qubits and entanglement. And some of the uh, network resources like base station and core network equipment will have quantum computing ability to support quantum radio access networks, uh, quantum data centers, quantum assistive wireless AI, uh, quantum blockchain, and also so, uh, support quantum as a quantum capabilities as a service where uh, uh, cloud quantum computers can be accessed. <laughs> So, sorry about that. Let's continue. Continue. I'm removing a few more. Sorry about that. Just uh, help, remove the. Helen, don't admit anyone now. I can see few suspicious users. Let's remove them. I can watch on YouTube so that the presentation is not. So, uh, sorry guys, I'm removing few of you. Uh, being considering you as suspicious, please watch on YouTube. Uh, yeah. Okay, so um, so this give a broad overview of this, how future uh, quantum uh, quantum enabled CG system will look like. And now uh, this gives um, a broad overview of the future global quantum internet, which will include 6G as one of its part for the uh, wireless part. and. So basically this global quantum internet will support secure communication, quantum enhanced sensing, 
for precise timing and highly accurate gps positioning in the future networks and also network quantum computing will be important application where uh, quantum computers in the cloud uh, can uh, will be in, uh, networked with each other to solve complex uh, problems so the main components of the quantum internet would be the quantum computer which will be stored in the cloud furthermore we will have quantum switch quantum repeaters and some of the end users will have quantum enabled devices for example a mobile phone can have a quantum uh, qkd chip which can be used to uh, share secret keys from the uh, network and then it can be used for um, secure data transmission uh, in the 6g networks so now i will move to quantum key distribution so there are a certain uh, security issues in our uh, current communication technology for example uh, as i mentioned 6g requires enhanced security and privacy and the current uh, networks we have this public key encryption or rsa based uh, encryption systems so this rsa is based on the assumption of computationally hard problems for prime factorization so rsa um assumes that the multiplication of large primes is easy however this reverse problem factorization is difficult so if this is difficult in a classical computer then this rsa cannot be broken however with the current uh, recent advancement in quantum computing the security of rsa is at risk because short factoring algorithm can be used to factorize large numbers which has a polynomial complexity as compared to the classical exponential complexity therefore we need quantum secure encryption schemes in the future communication networks so there are two possible solution for quantum secure cryptography the first is the post quantum cryptography or pqc pqc so in pqc it uh, it replaces the prime factorization problem with a much harder computational problem which Hello. currently doesn't uh, have any uh, efficient quantum algorithm uh, to solve it Uh, can you mute everyone okay so basically pqc is again uh, a software solution and there is no security proof for uh, pqc algorithm and some of the examples of pqc include lattice based hash based and multivariate based um, algorithm so this is a timeline which is uh, presented by nist for the standardization of pqc algorithm and recently some of the winners were uh, announced the other possible solution is using quantum key distribution so in pqd security is guaranteed by the helen please remove all the participants i am removing few participants uh, very frequently but again they are getting auto joined i don't know how like sani bhi and all So I'm damn sure they have the link and they have hacked the Zoom. So uh, let's remove all the participants and I request all the participants. Sorry for the inconvenience. Please watch on you, uh, YouTube. Except the host, no one is, uh, no one will be available on the uh, Zoom. So let's remove everyone, Helen. So then, can you help me to that. remove everybody? Uh, whom should i remove because sani bhi i am removing and that person is joining again and again and after that few other malicious users are joining this so it's better to remove everyone and i request everyone to join from uh, watch the live stream youtube uh, watch uh, what helen has posted in the chat So uh, let let's continue. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, QKD is a hardware solution and it provides unconditional security guaranteed by the laws of quantum mechanics. And here the main examples are discrete variable QKD and continuous variable QKD. So as you can see, one of the post quantum cryptography scheme is already cracked in our laptops. So PQC is not uh, is not um, unhackable. So basically, we should be developing quantum key distribution in six uh, G networks. So QKD offers unconditional information theoretic security in 6G. So it can be used for various applications uh, in the future networks, including data centers, cloud computing, 
quantum cryptography for uh, 6G networks and beyond 5G, and for uh, securing the IoT data and mobile edge computing data. And also one key applications of QKD will be securing the government data and banking transaction. Moreover, uh, we have to secure uh, the national uh, resources like smart grid and national pipelines. So for this, QKD is extremely important uh, for um, uh, preventing the hacking of these resources. As I already mentioned, healthcare services will be required uh, to provide enhanced security by using QKD. So uh, this QKD system will be used to uh, distribute the keys between two users. And then these keys can be used for different encryption schemes in the higher layers. For example, these keys can be used for um, link layer encryption, internet protocol, IPsec, or TLS or SSL security, or even for application layer like SSH and HTTPS. Um, uh, uh, security. So uh, first I will now describe the discrete variable QKD. So DV QKD uses single photon sources and detectors for uh, QKD and it is based on the principles of quantum no cloning theorem. So here is a um, brief overview of discrete variable QKD. So Alice encodes the random binary keys in two different bases in the rectilinear up down basis A or the diagonal basis of the photon polarization. Then Bob measures the incoming photons in the two different bases chosen randomly. So the preparation basis of Alice matches with the measurement basis of Bob. Then Bob will decode the key correctly given that there is no error in the channel. Then in the classical post-processing steps, Alice and Bob declare their basis selection and they retain only those bits for which the basis match. And then they carry out an error estimation step where they detect the presence of each dropper by comparing a fraction of the shifted key. So if the error is below a threshold, then the keys are secure and can be used for communication. And furthermore, in the information reconciliation, they correct these errors in the shifted keys using classical error correction schemes like LDPC codes. And finally, they apply a hash function for privacy amplification to further reduce the yield information about the key. So the other category of QKD is continuous variable QKD. So it encodes the key information in the quadratures of coherent states. So basically it uses lasers and homonine or heterodyne detectors. And here is a schematic of the CVQKD where the transmitter first generates uh, the uh, Gaussian random numbers, which are then encoded uh, on the coherent state or squeeze states. And then it is transmitted to Bob using the quantum channel, which can be controlled by Eve. Then Bob measures the incoming quantum state using homodyne or heterodyne detection. And then after decoding, it gets classical random variables. So after this quantum communication step, Alice and Bob share a string of correlated data from which they can extract the final secret keys using classical push processing and quantum, uh, which are similar to the discrete variable uh, QKD protocol. So um, as compared to DVQKD, CVQKD requires uh, these laser sources and homodyne detectors, which, are, uh, which can be easily integrated with the current and upcoming telecommunication technology. Therefore, it is anticipated that CVQKD will be much easier to integrate in the 6G networks. So this is an overview of the CVQKD protocol. So basically, Alice encodes the uh, generous two Gaussian random variables, which are then encoded in the two quadratures, for example, X and P or Q and AP. And Bob then randomly measures one of the quadrature of the received quantum state. And during the shifting process, Bob declares over the classical channel which of the quadrature was measured by him. And Alice retains only one of the two quadrature depending on Bob's measurement. And after this step, Alice and Bob have a string of correlated random variables. And they extract the final secret key by carrying out the of shifting, parameter estimation, posts processing, and authentication steps. So these are all carried out in the classical uh, communication channel using. Now I move to MIMO terahertz QKD. Uh, so uh, generally, these QKD systems are implemented using optical frequencies. However, recently there is an increasing interest of using terahertz CVQKD. So there are a number of reasons for using terahertz instead of optical frequency. For example, terahertz can support mobility because it requires less delicate pointing and tracking. And terahertz is also immune to ambient light, clouds, and dust as compared to optical frequency. Moreover, the preparation thermal noise is lower at room temperature for terahertz frequency. And we cannot go to lower microwave frequency because in the microwave, we will require cryogenic temperature and we cannot operate at room temperature for quantum communications. So furthermore, terahertz band is also compatible with the uh, 6G frequency spectrum, which has been currently being studied. Therefore, terahertz gives us um, 
uh, in between microwave and uh, visible light communication, which can be used for quantum communication. So, however, there are certain challenges for terahertz CVQKD. For example, the free space path loss and the atmospheric absorption loss due to water molecules and oxygen molecules is very large, very high at terahertz frequency. So due to this large, uh, high losses, it leads to lower secret key rate and the maximum transmission distance is also limited. So uh, we address these challenges uh, in my PhD thesis by using uh, the concept of MIMO. So before going into quantum MIMO, I want to discuss about this classical MIMO communication. So basically MIMO is a mature technology which in classical wireless communication that uses multiple antennas at the transmitter and receiver to improve the data rates using the uh, multiplexing and beamforming game. So MIMO improves spectral energy, energy efficiency of the wireless systems and MIMO is already a commercial technology which is already used in LTE, Wi-Fi and 5G services as shown in this, um, in this figure. This is for a large massive MIMO system and this is the Wi-Fi router which uses multiple antennas to improve the data rates. So this uh, MIMO um, terahertz CVQKD, so prior works on terahertz CVQKD have considered only single input, single output system, and they ignore the free space path loss, which is a very uh, strong uh, loss factor in terahertz. And all, uh, also MIMO QKD is only studied for free space optical discrete variable QKD system. And this is not applicable to the terahertz CVQKD system, which we want to investigate. And in our work, we have proposed a uh, system model for MIMO terahertz CVQKD, the channel estimation protocol, and we have carried out the secret key rate analysis under different attack models. So before describing the proposed MIMO CVQKD scheme, I would like to explain this quantum MIMO channel model for continuous variable quantum systems. So the quantization of the electromagnetic field gives annihilation and creation operators so denoted by A hat and A hat dagger, which satisfy this commutator relation. So the quadrature components are then given in terms of the annihilation and creation operators given by this expression. And these are measurable Hermitian operators which can be measured in the lab. Moreover, the annihilation operator is analogous to the complex baseband signal which is used in classical communication. And a single input, single output quantum channel is parameterized uh, by the channel transmissivity tau which models the attenuation and a thermal environment noise Vn, which depends on the frequency and the temperature of the environment. So the lossy channel can be modeled using a beam splitter model as shown in this figure. So the input mode on the transmitter is mixed with the thermal environment mode to give the output mode, which goes to a receiver and the output mode two is the transform version of the environmental mode. So this beam splitter model transform the input annihilation operator into output annihilation operators, which is modeled by this beam, beam splitter matrix. And this model maintains the commutator relations as required by the laws of quantum mechanics. So the MIMO terahertz channel is given by this expression. And in this work, we have generalized the size of beam splitter model, which I just, just described for a general MIMO channel. So this is shown in this figure. So basically Alice and Bob use singular value decomposition based transmit receive beam forming. So Alice use the matrix V for beam forming and Bob uses the combining matrix U dagger. And after this combining and beam forming, the MIMO channel decomposes into parallel single input, single output Gaussian channels. And here small r is the rank of this MIMO channel capital H. So in order to extract the keys, uh, key information, Eve introduces this two mode squeeze vacuum state. So one of the uh, state, uh, two, uh, one of the mode is stored in the quantum memory by E and the other mode is inserted in the quantum channel. The output of the quantum channel is then jointly measured with the stored mode to steal the key information using a joint quantum measurement. So this is the basic model of the uh, CVQKD for uh, MIMO systems. So for the uh, secret key rate analysis, we uh, this is the quadrature of uh, Bob's quantum state, which is measured by Bob. This X at A is the uh, quadrature transmitted by Alice and X at E is the quadrature inserted by E to extract the key information. And these are the quadrature variances given by Vs plus V0 and W. So in the post-processing step, it has been shown that reverse reconciliation has a higher secret key rate. So we consider only reverse reconciliation. So total secret key rate is given by the sum of the parallel single output, single output channels, where the secret key rate of the ith channel is given by this expression, where the first term is the classical Shannon's mutual information, uh, which is obtained by using homodyne or detector by Bob. 
and the second part which is the maximum information leaked to eve is given by the holevo information and this is obtained by using general quantum measurement so this ensures that even with the uh, quantum capabilities we are able to get some uh, key rates and this key will be secure from quantum attacks also so uh, the asymptotic secret key rate of the mimo system is given by this expression and this is quite complicated so we have derived a, a simplified taylor series expansion for low channel transmission which is given by this expression and this simplified expansion um, reveals the beam forming gain for multiple antennas as we see this is proportional to nrmt so the secret key rate increases as a factor of nrmt Furthermore, this expression can be used to get a um, condition for positive key rates. So, we want to get positive key rates from this. Then, this condition zeta greater than alpha should be satisfied. Here, zeta depends on the frequency and the temperature due to the preparation thermal noise v naught. So, here I plot the uh, factor zeta as a function of temperature for different frequencies, and we see that the condition zeta greater than alpha is satisfied. For the frequency range of 10 to 30 terahertz, so 10 to 30 terahertz is suitable frequency range, which can be used for positive uh, secret key generation in the terahertz domain uh, for uh, CVQPD at operating and home temperature. So for these frequency range, here I now plot the secret key rate as a function of distance for different MIMO configuration, and we also compare it with the single input single output baseline system. So we see that the single input, single output system can only provide transmission distance in centimeters, whereas with the MIMO system, we can go up to few hundred meters. And the vertical shift is uh, due to, as the number of antennas increase, this vertical shift is due to the beam forming gain, which uh, comes from the multiple transmitter and receive antennas. So basically this shows that MIMO terahertz CVQKD can be used for both indoor and outdoor applications in future communication networks. So in the previous work, we have assumed the availability of perfect channel knowledge, but in, in practice, this channel estimation is necessary for the SGD based beamforming. So we have proposed this pilot based estimation scheme where Alice transmit pilot signals to Bob and the channel is estimated at Bob by using a least square based estimator. And this is then fed back to Alice using the classical feedback channel. And Eve can get the knowledge of this channel estimate by intercepting this classical feedback link. So based on the channel estimate, Alice and Bob then, uh, Alice then uh, uh, does the beamforming and Bob does the combining using the estimated channel matrix. So we have characterized the input output relation between Alice and Bob uh, for this SVD based beamforming and with channel estimation error. So there are these additional noise terms now, which comes from channel estimation noise and the detector noise. And now we have considered two types of attack model. The first is the weaker individual attack and the other is a stronger collective attack. So in the individual attack, the maximum information leaked to Eve is given by Shannon's mutual information. And for the collective attack, the maximum information leaked is given by the Hollywood information. This is a higher value by using quantum measurements. And we have incorporated the effects of pilot overhead TP and the imperfect reconciliation, which is modeled by this beta parameter. And we have considered two types of measurement. One is the homodyne detector, which gives only measurement of one of the quadrature with lower detector noise. And heterodyne detectors has two quadrature for each quantum state, but there's a detector noise is increased. So there is a trade-off between homodyne and heterodyne, and we will see this trade-off in the um, simulation results. So basically, we have analyzed the secret key rate uh, using exact analysis, and then we have derived approximation for low channel transmittance to uh, have a more uh, intuition about the results. So here I show the uh, plots of this uh, secret key rate for two different types of attacks, which can be implemented by Eve for both homodyne and heterodyne measurement with different MIMO configuration. Left is on 32 by 32 and the right is on 256 by 256. So we can observe that there is a significant gap between the asymptotic upper bound and the real achievable secret key rate. So the asymptotic upper bound assumes the availability of perfect channel knowledge. However, as the distance increases, there is the, the gap increases. And moreover, we see that the performance of both homodyne and heterodyne schemes are almost the same. As I mentioned before, there is a trade-off. So the detector noise is increased in heterodyne. So even with two measurement outcomes for each quantum state, the secret key rate is not improved. So homodyne is as, as good as heterodyne. Furthermore, we see that the secret key rate can significantly degrade if, uh, if Eve is having the quantum resources to implement the stronger collective attack. So here are some conclusions for uh, this MIMO terahertz QKD. 
so as we see the terror cvqpd is important for unconditional security and it is compatible in 6g networks because terahertz is also a potential uh, spectrum for 6g wireless communication and we have shown that this mimo architecture is necessary to overcome the high losses in terahertz spectrum and with this mimo we can get uh, higher secret key rate and the maximum transmission distances are increased so this mimo cvqkd at terahertz can be used for both indoor and outdoor applications so now i will move on to qkd standardization so there are different standardization bodies which are working on to standardize qkd so the first one is etsi or european telecommunication standard institute so it has a industry study study group on qkd since 2008 and they have developed uh, group specification and reports for qkd and they have defined the use cases the components and the security proofs and the network architecture including software defined networking qkd the control plane of qkd and qkd application programming interface for telecommunication networks the other standardizing body is the international telecommunication union telecom standardization sector which has a focus group on quanta information technology for uh, 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 qkd since 2018 and they have um, have some recommendation which are already published and they are drafting including qkd networks the functional architecture the key management scheme the sdn control quantum random number generation the quality of service parameters for qkd networks and also the security and authentication uh, things in uh, qkd networks then we have this ietf internet engineering task force group so this group has a quantum internet research group since 2018 and they have a draft on architectures and applications of quantum internet which was published in 2021 and they uh, want to enhance the current classical network with quantum secure communication in the future also the ieee has a quantum initiative and they have defined software defined qkd working groups in 2016 and they are developing the qkd standard for tcp ip model and integration of qkd with software defined networking and open sin IEEE also has a quantum initiative and a comsup uh, quantum communication information technology uh, focus group then we have this international standardization organization and international electrotechnical commission which you know, who have a they have a study project for protecting the information communication technology since 2017 and they are drafting the standard for security requirement test and evaluation methods of qkd and they have identified potential attacks and the technical requirements for uh, industrial applications of qkd and finally we have this csa or cloud security alliance which have a quantum safe security working group since 2014 and they have identified the quantum safe methods for data transmission in the industrial sector and they have uh, shown that this qkd is one of the quantum safe methods which should be considered uh, in the standardization in the future so here is the forecasted timeline on the standardization of quantum key distribution in communication system so first we have this academia academia is already uh, long working on this qkd since 1980 on dividing the theoretical research and prototyping research in the laboratory environment industry has also uh, started prototyping and testing qkd um, for some specific applications and then there are some regional standardization bodies which are currently in the study phase and the work phase and then the international telecommunication union has started the study and work phase and finally the 3gpp standardization body which works on uh, defining the standards of uh, wireless um, wireless network including 4g and 5g they are uh, they will start this qkd standardization pretty late by maybe by the end of this decade then only it will be integrated in 6g communications so now uh, i will uh, finally discuss some of the implementation challenges of qkd from the Uh, hardware perspective so for implementing qkd the first main challenge is to have single photon sources so we require efficient single photon sources which can operate at room temperature and they can emit single photons at constant rate so single photon sources or weak current sources at optical and terahertz frequencies are required for implementing discrete variable qkd furthermore we require the development of chip based qkd system which can be easily integrated in mobile devices so current qkd systems require very bulky optical instruments and it is difficult to integrate them in the uh, handheld devices so then uh, next uh, challenge is to get uh, to develop single photon detectors with high quantum efficiency which are used again used in discrete variable qkd system 
and these uh, detectors should be easily integrated with silicon photonic circuits and the silic and the single photon avalanche detector should be operating at room temperature operation with high efficiency and for the cv qkd we require homodyne and heterodyne detectors so they should have low electronic noise for cv qkd application and the electronic noise should be well below the quantum short noise and uh, it sh it should also have low noise amplifiers we also require chip based detectors with high efficiency which can be used for integrating cv qkd technology in mobile devices and one main uh, challenge in the core network is the coexistence of classical and quantum data so in the core network the single fiber will be used for both transmission of both classical and quantum data in the core network so in the core network we will have some channels for classical and some uh, for quantum channel communication and for this the same net, uh, same core we need to uh, develop methods for reducing the cross talk between these two channels and also reduce the effect of raman noise on the quantum communication channel therefore we require efficient uh, resource allocation schemes and hardware filtering problem which can reduce the cross talk between these two channels which will be using the same uh, optical fiber and finally this quantum repeater technology is very important which is used for long distance quantum communications so uh, this quantum signals cannot be amplified uh, in like in the classical domain because it will violate uh, uh, the no cloning principle of quantum mechanics so it requires some much complicated phenomena of quantum repeaters which will be using uh, entanglement swapping and quantum memory so this requires sufficient work in terms of hardware so that uh, these quantum repeaters can work at room temperature for with high efficiency which can be then be used for uh, global quantum internet development with, uh, with uh, between two uh, continents also so these are some of the challenges which need to be overcome for widespread deployment of quantum communication qkd in future uh, networks so finally this is the conclusions of my talk so uh, as it is anticipated the 6g will be standardized by uh, 2030 and beyond and we have shown that this quantum technology will also be mature in the next decade and we are entering in the domain of uh, the second quantum revolution and we have shown that there is a natural synergy of 6g and quantum key distribution for enhanced security for 6g use cases in the future and uh, also uh, cl classical communication cl classical internet will be uh, existing coexistence with the quantum communication so classical communication is not going away we will have the quantum communication as an add on feature on the classical networks so we have to develop uh, develop techniques which can uh, have the coexistence of classical and quantum communication so this is a multidisciplinary uh, effort uh, area which requires efforts from experimental physicists electrical engineers computer scientists and the uh, work from industry and academia is required so that we can develop uh, the um, unhackable quantum internet uh, in the future and yeah finally thank you for your attention and we can now have the question answering session so th thanks a lot uh, dr neel for amazing session and sharing very uh, what pictures holds for 6g wireless and uh, quantum communication and uh, the research which you are doing so if anyone is interested in learning more and uh, want to explore the application of quantum communication or the use cases of quantum computing in uh, communication of 6g wireless please uh, reach out to dr Lee. so we have few questions from youtube zoom i had to kick off most of the participants even though uh, many of them would have been legit because of being suspicious because they were playing uh, some random noise over here and because of that i'm not letting in like this was the first time which happened to us so i had no other option yeah so uh, they one question uh, dr neel like as part of your research where are you able to prepare to be on your own and, and use to be more or something else yeah so basically uh, my my research is uh, mostly theoretical uh, communication engineering so uh, currently uh, my research is focused on studying yeah. the feasibility feasibility studied feasibility studies and studying the ultimate performance limits of quantum communication so for implementation of mimo qkd uh, as as i said there's uh, significant advances in the hardware technology is required so we require terahertz sources and detectors uh, which can operate at the quantum limit so uh, th this is not currently implemented but um, 
in the future it can be implemented as the uh, quantum hardware technology increases yeah. And uh, we have next question, which uh, I mean, we are asking what is the maximum distance tested in terahertz? So uh, terahertz uh, currently, uh, I think some experimentation has been carried out, and uh, they can uh, go up to few meters in the indoor environment. So that is what uh, achieved with the current single input, single output system. But if this MIMO technology is implemented in terahertz, then uh, we can uh, go up to few hundred meters, and outdoor application is also possible. The next question we have, like, what? So it's basic, but like, what kind of bits are in transmission between alif and baud? Like classical bits or qubits? There was some example related to alif baud, which you presented for. Uh, so what kind of bits? Question? So uh, there was okay. an example uh, with, okay, okay, uh, using okay. Alice yeah. and Bob. Right? So we are asking it classical bit transmission or qubit transmission. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a good question. So for QKD, we require both a quantum channel and a classical channel. So the quantum channel is used for transmitting the qubits, which are encoded uh, in the polarization of the single photon. And then after the quantum communication is done, then we use the classical bits in the classical communication channel for classical post-processing. So this is required for uh, QKD. So we have both qubits and classical bits uh, for QKD implementation. What are getting used, like uh, whatever channel we are using? Uh, sorry? So both, both the bits are using, like classical bits and qubits, both are getting used. Based on the like channel we are using for transmission. Uh, yeah, so let me show you this figure. Um, so this will clarify. So uh, basically, in the quantum key distribution, we have this quantum channel. So first, Alice will prepare the quantum state. So this is the qubit preparation. Then it will transfer it to Bob. So this is the transmission of qubits. So after this has been done, the first phase is over. Then this classical channel will be used, and in this, the classical bits will be transmitted between Alice and Bob so that they can do the error correction and privacy amplification in the second part of the protocol. And after only after these two steps, they can guarantee that the key which they have generated is perfectly secure. Uh, next question we have why can't we use QCD in 5G tech? And what's the limitation in using that in 5G network? Yeah, so uh, 5G has not considered uh, QKD. Uh, so there are a number of challenges, as I already mentioned, that we don't have the hardware now to, uh, because this QKD requires very bulky equipments. Uh, so it is not possible with the current hardware technology to implement it in the mobile devices. However, there are certain, um, in the core network, uh, 5G can use QKD. And I think some um, services like for example, SK Telecom in Korea, they have some limited uh, QKD uh, um, application in the core network. So in the core network, it uses optical fibers and this bulky transmitter and QKD receiver can be used. So there's some limited application of QKD in 5G, but it is not that widespread and uh, nowhere close to the wireless access, which we are, we should be there in the 6G. So Dr. So, Neil, I have a question. Uh, the, the key difference between 5G and 6G is in quantum, embracing quantum? So uh, quantum will be one of the key add-on on 6G, but uh, 6G will also require um, in the class. So uh, the, the classical data speed, uh, the data rate should be improved. So for that, we will have new antenna technology like uh, the intelligent surfaces, which I mentioned, and also uh, the satellite-based communication. So uh, Basically, it will have both classical and quantum, and quantum will be specifically used for security. So for the security aspect, quantum will be there, but for other data, high data rate and latency, we will be relying on the classical development of the classical communication technology. Okay, thanks. So our next question we have, uh, will the hardware complexity increase for classical plus quantum security systems? Uh, yeah, so for the um, hardware complexity, 
uh, yeah basically if we want to include uh, quantum uh, quantum key distribution then the hardware complexity will increase because with the current uh, classical detectors and transmitters we cannot establish quantum keys so yeah so this hardware complexity will increase and uh, this is the challenge which needs to be overcome in the in the hardware technology in the next decade yeah so these questions are getting answered Meanwhile, if you have any follow-up questions, guys, related to any of these questions, please uh, post on YouTube if you're watching over there, and uh, Ellen will pass it to us on Zoom, and they will try to answer. May I ask? Yes, please. May, uh, may I ask a question? Okay. Yes, go ahead. I am enjoying very much the clear, clear presentation. So much information, unbelievable. But okay. the relation to the Nobel Prize via the locality and local communication, I wish to find out more about that. Okay, so this is a very interesting question. So your question is, what is the relation of quantum technology with the work which has been done by these three physicists? So yes. for example, um, they have, experimentally uh, verified this uh, bell inequality so uh, one type of quantum key distribution is this uh, which is based on entangled photons so there will be uh, i have not talked about this entanglement based qkd in, in my work but uh, when uh, there is a third party charlie which distributes this uh, it can be either a third charlie or alice can have an entangled source and it will send one of the uh, part to Bob and the other entangled part will be kept by her and then they will do the measurement. So if they do the measurement on the same basis, then they will have perfect correlations. So which comes from the properties of entanglement. And then after this, um, this measurement on the entangled photons, they can do a belt test. So if it violates the belt test, then they can be sure that the uh, particles which they have, they were perfectly entangled and there was no eavesdropper. So if this bell inequality satisfies, then uh, the keys can be used for uh, QKD. So this is the principle of uh, E91 protocol, which was uh, uh, other discrete variable based Q QKD protocol. And uh, Professor Anton Zeilinger, he has also uh, worked on uh, this pioneering this, uh, using the principles of bell inequalities for uh, quantum information science applications. For example, the Chinese Mishia satellite uh, it uh, verified this bell inequality from earth station to satellite and it was done in collaboration with professor anton thank you so very much thank you very much thank i you like for the to question. suggest that you write a paper exactly on these few sentences that you said because it will be very timely and very interesting for a lot a lot of people Thank For example, so I know very little about communication. I know a little bit about the physics and the quantum, but I still need good, good explanation, description, like your talent can be used in a very good paper about that. Good luck with yeah, it. Sure. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'll try. Thanks. Uh, next, so we have um, SVD plus QKD processing plus classical for just security. So, um, so the question is that uh, will this QKD processing is too much for security? So actually, it is not too much because this SVD processing is already being done in our uh, classical MIMO technology, which we are using in the LTE or uh, Wi-Fi system. So this is just uh, using the terahertz frequencies uh, for doing the processing in a terahertz domain so that we can detect the quantum states. And as per the as for the latency, so we do not need the quantum secure keys to be generated very often. So once we have a sufficiently long key, we can reuse it for encrypting our data. So if we have like 64 GB data for transmission, we don't need 64 GB of secret key. We can need only few kilobits or few megabits of data. And then 
so we, we will uh, do the QKD protocol only for limited time, and then we will reuse the data for uh, encrypting our uh, actual data in, in, in the 6G communications. So latency should not be an issue, I believe, once the key has been established and stored in the transmitter and the receiver. Has, if the quantum computing works in the qubit, but then processing or using the CG in quantum computing, is there any changes in the process of working? Okay, so I, I believe the question is that uh, what type of qubits can be used? So I believe most of them are from quantum computers. You believe, uh, you see that the qubits are the semiconduct, uh, silicon uh, semiconductor qubits, which require these cryogenic temperatures. But that is not the case because there can be different physical realization of qubits. So for communication in 6G, we will be working with uh, optical, uh, either photons or photo photonic based communication. So it will be the qubits will be realized using single photons or using the uh, co coherent states. So these will be working in the photonics and a terahertz domain. So this is fundamentally different from the qubits, which they are uh, in the quantum computing hardware. So this is the main difference. So because we require flying qubits in the communication, so uh, for that uh, the qubit will be realized using photonics or terahertz. The next question is related to the same previous question. Like, can you elaborate the type of quantum channel? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, the quantum channel basically, if we go on a theory side, so the quantum channel is basically a map, a completely positive trace preserving map which takes input as density matrix and gives the output as density matrix. And for the physical channels, uh, the, the quantum channel is modeled, uh, for example, the optical fiber that can be modeled as a quantum channel. And for that, we have this uh, beam splitter based model, which I discussed. And similarly for, uh, for the wireless communication, we will have this um, wireless quantum channel. And it, it is also modeled using the beam splitter. And here, uh, the parameters are the loss uh, loss parameter, uh, the absorption coefficient, and the uh, thermal noise. So uh, the physically, it can be the optical fiber or the free space channel, uh, which can model both quantum channels. And uh, next question is from someone whom I have like completely dropped from the call, it seems, considering that person has a suspicious user. So the question from that person is like, what type of hardware will these quantum systems run on? It looks like these proposals are for some future board level quantum system that has not yet been developed. At the present time, quantum computing runs on computers that are room size and kept near absolute zero. And uh, he has also mentioned like his son is graduate from UC Berkeley with a degree in applied maths. And that person lives in Berkeley near uh, Rikachi computer. So we, we have thank done a lot of research on this subject. Yeah, th thank you so much for yeah. the, uh, this important question. So that is a very interesting question. So you are right that this current quantum computers, which for example, IBM quantum computers, they are in the cloud. So uh, these are based on this uh, superconducting qubits. So they require very low temperature. So these, these, um, we cannot have these in our everyday application in our home. So uh, in the future, as I mentioned, in the global quantum internet, these quantum computers will be connected to each other using this quantum communication link. So in the quantum communication link, we do not require uh, so these freezing temperatures because we, we need to transmit qubits. Oh. And these qubits can be the, the flying qubits, which I'm talking, they can be uh, connected, uh, implemented using this optical fibers. So basically in the 6G, this communication technology will be in the technology which will connect to com quantum computers in the cloud so that they can do distributed quantum computing. And the other application would be that we will have the quantum computer in the cloud. And as a user, you and I can access, can upload our program to the uh, quantum computer using this 6G communication technology. So we would be able to uh, transmit our data to the uh, cloud and that will be able to using uh, uh, that so this is in terms of quantum computing part and as i mentioned if this there are other technologies which are being developed for quantum computing for example photonic based system 
uh, there are a lot of companies which are working on this photonics uh, based quantum computing and these photonic base has the uh, poss poss uh, possibility that it can run at room temperature so if this technology matures in the future then we can have that this quantum computer will be mi miniaturized and they can then be used in for example in the base station uh, they can be used for solving complex optimization problem and i'm not saying that this quantum computing will go come into our mobile phones but the mobile phones can do some basic capability like sending and receiving uh, quantum uh, quantum uh, um, communication bits so that they can uh, generate the secret keys so that is different from the actual quantum computer and thanks a lot to dr neel for answering all of all the questions very patiently and i'll find the doubt of that in may i ask one uh, more yes please please go ahead yeah uh, that's very naive naive thinking but listening to your recent answer mentioning clouds so could be that the technology you describe may be useful to improve the cloud itself uh, yes so as i mentioned in the cloud we are storing our data so one possible application is that when we are doing a transaction from the cloud we we need to uh, do the encryption so that encryption can be done using this quantum keys which we can be distributed using quantum key distribution so that is for securing our data in the cloud and the other is that quantum computing that is for linking to cloud quantum computers for distributed quantum computing and also for uh, accessing the quantum computer using our classical machines which which is all, already possible in some form using the ibm uh, quantum computing platform so can you envisage or imagine communicating a lot of uh, computing centers in the world all of them communicating via the cloud yeah because uh, it is very difficult to build a very large quantum computer at one place so uh, a lot of uh, quantum computers like for example one country can have a different quantum computer different locations and uh, the, all these computers can be connected using quantum communication links and then the joint power can be used of these uh, interconnected quantum computers for solving some certain problems so th this is i think uh, this should be in the future wow thank you thank you for the question do we have any other questions from the attendees on the phone yes yes you can unmute yourself and go ahead one by one Uh, meanwhile, I will ask. I have few questions. Uh, might be useful for that. So, uh, seeing the like research, what you are doing on six uh, G wireless and the integration of six G uh, wireless and uh, this uh, quantum com communication. Right? So, uh, do you have like an overview of like which all uh, universities are doing the research and how well they are collaborating with uh, industry as well and how does the future look like in your terms? Like, I mean, more funding opportunities so, will be there for people interested in pursuing research, like as a PhD or postdoc. Uh, yeah, I think uh, in terms of quantum communication and QKD. So, uh, in, in the Singapore, this NUS they have very strong program on quantum communication QKD, and there are also a different number of um, industries which are working on QKD. For example, in India, there is QNU Labs. And uh, in the Switzerland, there is um, ID Quanti and Toshiba Research. They are working on. Uh, they have actually hardware products which can generate secret keys and QKDs using uh, optical fibers. And uh, I think in the industry, uh, we, different countries are now coming up with their quantum mission, and they are extensively invest, uh, investing in this uh, quantum technologies. In India, also like uh, eight thousand crores have been allocated for a national mission on quantum technology. US has also recently come up with a, a mission of quantum communication and quantum computing. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, I think most of the uh, both in India and in US and Europe, uh, Europe also has a very strong 
um, community working on this quantum communication. And, and I think um, one of the earlier free space demonstration uh, was done in the in the, by the European in, uh, uh, universities. And also, like I have one question, not related to quantum communication exactly, but uh, uh, in US, I think people were developing some post quantum algorithm, right? And I think after yes. development, I heard few of them were broken or something. Like I'm not exactly sure. What what happened? Like, do you yeah. have any connection that like where the post quantum yeah, you, cryptography is going? Like, yeah, you are right. So I mentioned this in my talk also. For example, there are uh, two possible solutions for quantum secure cryptography. So the first is this PQC. So this is a timeline which was set by uh, NIST, the Standardization Institute of USA, and they recently, I think in August, they declared some of the round three winners. Um, and they are not standardized yet, but they are still studying what can be a potential uh, solution. But you can see that some of this post quantum cryptography is already broke up, broken using uh, like mm -hmm. brute force search on a laptop. Yeah. So these PQC, I think, is not, uh, you cannot see PQC and QKD as separate entities. So I think some of the PQC algorithms will be requiring some, some random number seeds or some initial uh, keys. So QKD and PQC can work together like in a synergy. So initially we have some keys and that seeded key can be used for some stronger PQC algorithm. So both can complement each other and then we can have a stronger encryption scheme in the near future. This is my thought on PQC. Thanks a lot, sir, for answering. We have another follow-up question from Anish. So uh, when we connecting all the quantum computing in the lake, then they will be easy in the hacking to the network or to have the anonymous access. So in what case there will be the security for the data transmitting or to the servers? Yeah, so uh, I don't uh, think it will be easier for hackers to hack because the basic principle of QKD is to detect the hackers. So before the secret keys are generated, they, the transmitter and receiver can be sure that if the secret keys are secure or not. If it is perfectly secure, then only they will carry on their actual data transmission. So I think uh, by incorporating quantum communication, QKD, it can be, uh, it, it can prevent this hacking actually. So I don't think security will be compromised with quantum computing. Thank you. Uh, and like, as uh, Dr. Kumar has already requested for the paper, so like even I didn't have any knowledge about quantum computation and 60 violence. So you look forward for some papers from your end like which can like, explain these things in a bit more detail for us to learn. And uh, do you have any advice for the people like who are looking for uh, exploring these spaces or the application of quantum in 60 violence or 5G? Like can we do something with yeah I think uh, there's a very good resource from the IBM quantum computer. So a good starting point would be to uh, learn about these uh, quantum search algorithms and uh, quantum machine learning um, algorithms. And after you have uh, knowledge of these quantum computing algorithms, then you can look for this, comp this optimization problems in wireless for which this maybe this quantum algorithm can give some advantage. So for example, in the MIMO data detection schemes and channel estimation, these uh, quantum computing algorithms might provide an advantage. So that would be a good research direction for uh, young young researchers who, are, uh, who want to work in this area. Thanks a lot for your advice. Uh, I can't see any more questions. Helen, do we have any left out questions on YouTube? No, so far I don't see more questions on YouTube. I think we are done. So, uh, thanks a lot, Dr. Neil, for the, uh, coming for the talk today. And sorry for the hiccups in between. Those are totally unexpected. Okay. <laughs> yeah. so, Actually, there was a talk yeah, on quantum, so someone the... tried to hack. <laughs> yeah. So, showing like why should we shift towards quantum now? Not just yeah. stick with this. Yeah.
Thank you so much for. It was really it was interesting to learn amazing. on. Thank you so much. Yeah, same here, sir. Like it was um, honor for us to learn from you, and we will look forward for more upcoming sessions from you. Future. Yeah, sure. Uh, actually, there's uh, one Thank more last question. Helen. Yes, please. Yeah, yeah. We have one more from Dr. Gaurav. Uh, can we discuss main differences between quantum computing and quantum computation? Yeah. So basically, uh, quantum computing. Um, uh, I believe that quantum com uh, quantum communication is more mature than quantum computing because for quantum computing you require these heavy cryogenic temperatures for um, running these algorithms. But for quantum communication, it's pretty simple. You only need uh, this uh, single photon sources or detectors or coherent sources, which are more mature enough in the technology and. Uh, that's why um, it is easier to integrate this uh, quantum communication uh, in our uh, upcoming wireless communication technologies. On the other hand, quantum computing, it will take more uh, technological development in this area so that we can have it our regular use. So in, in that sense, uh, the main difference is that quantum communication is for uh, the main applications could be like this uh, distributing secret keys and um, uh, another like for sensing and all and quantum computing is for um, sol uh, de developing a general purpose quantum computer so that will require more uh, challenges we should be overcome uh, so that you are muted oh sorry uh, thanks a lot, Dr. Neil, for answering. I don't see any more questions. Okay. Uh, I don't yeah, see I... more questions. Oh, by the I way, there's one more, more question. Can someone help? Where can I learn more about quantum for free and with not much knowledge before? Wow. Yeah. I think quantum uh, IBM uh, has a lot of resources. Uh, you just go to IBM quantum computing. They have a textbook online. You can learn the basics of uh, quantum computing and quantum information from that textbook. And also they have a lot of uh, summer school videos uh, which can be used for learning this. This is a qubit course uh, sponsored by IBM, I think. Q uh, World, you can join. They host many uh, workshops. For if you're planning to get started with quantum computing and take some basic courses, joining these communities will be worthwhile. And the many upcoming challenges as well, like Code Camp by Fanny Lane and IPM All Challenge is getting started. Then one hackathon is going on by Tuesday. Join the community and you will start getting those updates from. The people involved in these. Uh, ah. okay. All right. Uh, I think we are done almost. Okay. I think the okay. Yeah. People are like ending up the talk. Like I just wanted to thank Dr. Neil again for his valuable time and coming to uh, deliver the talk and share his knowledge with us. And thanks to Helen and uh, Dr. Babe for creating such kind of community where we can come and uh, learn from the experts and get your doubts here. So if you have not joined yet, please uh, go and join uh, Washington DC Quantum Computing Meetup group uh, on LinkedIn or Meetup. And if you have any speaker in mind or if you want to be a speaker, so feel free to reach out to us. And uh, there are many other quantum communities that are interesting. You want to get updates and all, you can look at the sponsors like who are who all are working with us in collaboration and hosting these videos. Yeah, that's it from my end. And thanks once again for joining the, the call today, watching a live stream on YouTube. Okay. Thank you for coming. Uh, thank you so much for organizing and uh, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Neil. Um, I hope you'll come again, you know, when you have some more exciting results. We'll invite yeah, sure. you. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. okay.
and share your slides with Helen. Uh, yeah, I'll share it. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 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 Shadeb, right. Shadeb, uh, can you uh, email me? Can you talk uh, in the Are Gmail, Google, Google, Google Talk or something? Yes, sir. I'm sending you the invites right away. Okay.